All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Videos Games, Lions Arcade. And what we like to do is videotape some of uh, some of our arcade games that we get in, especially if it's a really cool one. And guess what? Today we have a really cool one. So this is Atari's Gauntlet Legends. I'm just going to take a little overview video of it here. What we do is we buy uh, we buy arcade games and then we fix them up and sell them to people. So whenever we get a really cool one in, we like to make a little video of it. And we're trying to get a bunch of videos up on our YouTube channel so that you guys can see some of the cool games we we get in. And also because a lot of these games, this was put out in the 90s, for instance. A lot of these games don't uh, really get the respect they deserve. A lot of people talk about the classics that came out in the 80s, and we get all those too. But this is uh, this is a really cool one that came out in the late 90s that Atari released. Um, Atari put out the original Gauntlet in the uh, the mid 80s. I would think probably 85 or so. I haven't looked it up, but um, and then they went well over 10. You know, they put out Gauntlet One and then they put out Gauntlet Two, and they had a really unique cabinet that was a four-player cabinet. And so you could walk up at any time and join in on the game. So it made operators a lot of money because, uh, for a couple reasons. One, four people could play at the same time. And two, uh, it, you were constantly dying in the game. Like you, As you went through, uh, you were running out of health the whole time. So it was a really big hit. So whenever the idea popped up to them to finally make another sequel... This is what they came up with. So this is Gauntlet Legends, and I just figured I'd show uh, a little overview of it and some cool things about it. It's a really cool cabinet. As you can see, the artwork's just awesome on these. So you've got four characters you can pick from. And we've got two on this side and then two on the other side. And the way they designed the cabinet, it's got full side art. A lot of games, uh, especially by the 90s, just had stickers on the side or, you know, just in a a little medallion or something but this one had art everywhere you can see on the control panel too it's even got the weapons that they use so you've got the staff there you got a sword there you got an axe there and you've got arrows there and then if you look up on the marquee they're in reverse order so you've got the archer on the left the uh, warrior there the Valkyrie I believe that's how you say it and then the wizard and this is the famous game uh well, the original one you know uh, wizard needs food and you would constantly be searching for uh food or keys or whatever but of course if you put another quarter in you could play a little longer here's the neat thing about this one since we usually sell these to people for their home that right there Replay. So on this game, unless you want to, there's no need for quarters. So since Atari knew this was probably going to be a big hit, they did a lot of really cool things. First of all, the cabinet it just has an amazing look to it. I'll back back out. Look at that thing. I mean, look how it's designed. It really kind of stands out, and they had the guts to make it purple. <laughs> So that purple part on the front, that's considered, the front of the game is considered a kick panel. And a lot of times they get kicked. So a lot of games, the front of it will be kind of beat up. Especially if you put it in something like a skating rink. Uh, the kids would actually, you know, beat the front of the game with, the, with their skates. But Atari, since they knew this was going to be an awesome game, had the wherewithal to make it out of metal, the front of it. that right there as you can see see that little hole next to the door that was for a hasp that a security hasp that they installed a, uh, some operator did but since the front's metal it's a lot harder to repair usually if it's wood we'll fill that in and get rid of it but not on a metal plate so that was one little thing that they did and people ask us all the time they say Lions Arcade chose video games I would love to have 
your gauntlet legends. But the problem is it's too big. I can't get it through my doorway. How do I get it through my doorway? So, like a lot of games, Atari designed this one so that the control panel is removable. So if you lift this up, now normally you can't lift this up, but I've got it unsecured. As you can see, there's a couple little bolts down there that hold it in place, and a couple bolts there that hold it in place. And then all of the wiring has these little disconnects on it. So you can disconnect the control panel and take it completely off the game. And so if you were to do that, as you can see, it would make it a lot more narrow and it'll go through a regular door. But look at that big sign that they put on it, the big light box. That's called the marquee at the top. If you'll see on other games, it's nowhere near that size. So you'll run into a problem where it may not even make it out of our commercial door. It's too tall. So they made this awesome little design where it actually folds back out of the way. And again, usually you can't do that because it's got bolts in it. It was just for moving purposes, but I've got the bolts out of it. So you can see that it makes it a lot smaller. So a lot of these games that they released uh, actually fold, and fold down or come apart or pieces come off so that you can actually get it through a regular door. And it's usually no problem putting it in a house. So Another thing that Atari did that was really cool is on this game, and it was also on uh, NFL Blitz, was they used these special joysticks. These are called 49-way joysticks. They, they have a completely different base on them. Most joysticks are four-way or eight-way. So what that means is a four-way joystick, you would go right, left, up, or down. An eight-way joystick, you can go up and right, but you can also go up and right at the same time. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different ways you can go. Well, a 49-way joystick is set up as a grid. So you can go right, but you can also go just a little bit to the right or centered or a little bit to the left or a lot to the left. So the, where that comes in in gameplay is, for instance, if you're the blue wizard and you're running through the game, you can walk through the game, or if you hold it all the way over, you can run through the game. So it, what you end up with is a much more accurate joystick. They only use these in a couple games. Um, and it's actually a concept that was around, that Williams used in a couple games um, back in the 80s, but this was the new version of it. So this was Atari's, one of their really well-designed games. I mean, it just looks amazing. It was a really fun game. They did a really good job designing the cabinet. And it's a uh, it looks great. It's got a really cool look to it. So, this was a medium resolution monitor too. Um not the standard resolution monitors that you see in most games. So, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to like I usually do turn this off, go get a tripod. And when I come back, you'll be able to see a little bit of the gameplay. I'll play through a little bit of it for you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are filming. Uh, this is a, uh, this is, a lot of people will just capture the, capture the image uh, coming off of the board using, you know, equipment, but I'm just setting up a camera and videotaping how the monitor actually looks. This is a medium resolution Wells Garner 7500 and we've rebuilt it. It's got a pretty good picture on it. It's not perfect. There's a couple little things on it that aren't meant um, that you can see in the image. But all in all, it looks really good. If It's nice and colorful. It has a really bright picture. Um, the main problem with these usually is they dim over time. They, they just they won't be bright enough and it's kind of annoying. But this one doesn't have that problem. It's a, it's a nice bright monitor. It looks good. The graphics look good. And it's got all three of the colors there, nice and bright. Um, monitors use three colors, red, green, and blue, to create all the other colors. And so if sometimes you'll have a, on a CRT like this, you'll have like a weak red gun or something, so the red won't be bright enough. And no matter how you adjust it, you can't get it right if that tube's uh, shot. But this has a really nice tube, still looks good. And uh, what I'm going to try to do is play through a little bit and just let you see the gameplay a little bit. And... We'll see how it goes. This is on free play, so no quarters necessary. Enter initials to build a character. Now, since I'm player one, I'm the yellow uh, character. 
and you can put your initials in a little trick if you put a let's see a a a that's what everybody puts so they've probably got a lot of uh stuff acquired already <laughs> I guess you, I guess you would need to password those. So maybe that won't work. So you can pick whichever character you want. I'm gonna go with the warrior, who is good at close combat. It says. Player two, three, or four could join it as well, but it's just me. Welcome, yellow warrior. Select a journey. So you have different levels here. Forest, castle, medium, difficulty, mountains, easy, desert's hard. Let's go back to the mountain. Don't want hard. As I've said before, I am not a great player, but we'll run through it a little bit. So you've got a turbo button, a fight button, and a magic button. Find the exit. Use key to open treasure chests. Extra speed button. So if you hold turbo down, you run. So here's the eight way, the 49 way thing. We'll see if we can get that to work. So if I move just a little bit, he walks, but if you hold it, he runs. Destroy generators to stop enemies. Avoid dangerous objects. I use down below, so let's go find another one. There it is. will continue to spawn if you don't destroy the little huts that they're coming out of. So. You can see how if you just use the joystick, he just runs around normal, but if you hold turbo down, he's got his axe raised up. Even the warrior has a little bit of magic you can do. Collect gold to buy power ups. Now, if I would have put my password and my initials in at the beginning, this game has a battery feature that will actually save uh, your settings. And not just while you've got the power on or anything. If, if you were playing this out in the uh, in a location back in the day, like if you were playing at the bowling alley or whatever, you could come back a week later and put your initials in and start off right where you left out, where you left off uh, before. Which that actually worked to the operator's advantage to have that because if you start off where you uh, ended up, it'll be a much It'll be a much, uh, you'll be in a much harder location on the game, so you'll actually go through your quarter quicker. Oh. There's my key, let's see what we get. We need a dent. Go. It's just going to pile up my gold, pile up my kills, pile up my experience. Buy power ups. So you can get it. 
All I have, all, all I can afford is a key. So, why not? You are now entering Dagger Peak. Now this is all just on the mountain. You know, there were, if you remember, there were four different levels you could start off at. Save keys to open doors and chests. I'm gonna try to use some magic there. A little too much going join on. In you hear it say join in anytime. It's trying to get other people to give me, give me a little help. I found the key. Remember, there wasn't our chest back down here? Yeah. So we'll try going up this way, see what we find. Uh oh. Might have wasted a key. that it's giving you that were the, the voiceover that he keeps saying you can actually turn that off in the menu if, so if you bought this game and put it in your house or something you can turn that off if you want it after a while because it probably get tiring if, if they're telling you stuff that you already know because you own the game Also has a uh, difficulty setting in the menu. So if you uh, decided it was too easy, all that can be changed. I don't know if I can run up that hill or not. Let's see. I guess you can. If I had any magic, now would be the time to use it. You can see down at the bottom of the screen, my health is just really going down because they're all over me. Needs food badly. little playthrough show you a little bit of the gameplay again I'm not a great player but it'll show you kind of if you've never played it or you've never had the arcade version and that's how cool an arcade game looks in the dark like it was back in the day all right folks hope you enjoyed it see you next time